what I do now, I wasn't capable of doing when I first started. Mm. I was shy, I was introverted, I really struggled on camera. The idea of having a social media account where I actually had a goal of gaining yeah. followers, it wasn't something that I ever expected me to do. Over the last six years, I've built a business that affords me the opportunity to do whatever I want and make a great living doing so. It's not gonna look like the way you want to at the start, you have to start anyway. I was like a pretty terrible student. Shitty part about it is I was a kid who actually tried a lot and didn't get the results I wanted. School never really made sense to me in that aspect. But you have to understand that you can. Then you have to figure out how to do it. Just go and try it. Yeah. The worst thing that happens is it doesn't work. Yeah. The best thing that happens is it completely changes your life. Yeah. How much money are you making right now? <laughs> do you want the honest answer? I want I, the honest I, answer. It, it floats between somewhere between 30 and 40,000 a month. It's crazy. I can't compete with people that are obsessed. With Obsession is so important. Mm -hmm. Ironically, since I hired an editor, my emails I get every day from people offering editing has like yeah. skyrocketed. Understand that offering your services for free comes at a cost for that person. If you're worried about your friends and family judging you, they will, but who cares? If you're worried about what people will think of you, fuck them. If the dream is big enough, it's worth trying this is the first time <laughs> we're not recording in vibes creative hq thank you for having us in That's your right. space brother tom we're in melbourne obviously because this is where you're based <laughs> dude i'll tell you i'm stoked that we managed to find some time within our schedules to make this happen because as soon as i knew i was coming to melbourne for a client project mm. with vice creative i'm like I need to try to get yeah, Tom on the pod. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, th thank you, man. Thank no, you for making course, the time. And because yeah. I know you're also super busy with everything you're doing. We're going to talk obviously about it. So thank you, yeah. dude. How no, are it's, you? It's, it's always fun. I love doing this sort of stuff. So I'm happy to. I'm good. I'm good. I'm busy at the moment, which is like... <laughs> you are? Yeah. Uh, like it's, it's, a good, it's a good kind of busy. I think I'm like... I've got a holiday coming up. Yeah. So like McKeely and I go to New Zealand on the 1st to the 15th of April. So I'm kind of like burning the candle at both ends yeah. at the moment to try Smashing. and get everything done yeah but it's um it's good it's kind of like it you got to make hay while the sun shines mm -hmm. in a little bit of a way mm -hmm. i'm sure you mm -hmm. understand yeah. as yeah, a creative 100%. so as things have kind of gotten more and more hectic it's hard to not go and think okay well i might as well mm -hmm. double triple mm -hmm. quadruple down on everything i'm doing yeah um so it's it's a crazy crazy world at the moment but yeah it's exciting i'm loving everything i'm doing which is the best part and that's one of the most important things i've learned with everything i'm doing and as a creative entrepreneur that mm. you need to learn to recognize momentum and yeah. how to build it and recognize when the ball is rolling because i think a lot yeah. of people they get stuff happening but they don't realize it's happening or they mm. get too comfortable they're like oh yeah yeah we got a, the biggest job we have got yeah. so we can chill a little bit yeah. and then you're like you know things go down they don't get jobs they stop making money partnerships all this stuff and they're like wait we were doing so great what happened yeah. i've been there a few yeah. times so now i know now i recognize when things the ball is rolling and i can push that thing even further because eventually it's just gonna drop it's like yeah. a wave it's like surfing you know you get a wave you try to rip it as much as you can but eventually the wave will die and you need to paddle back yeah it's a combination i mean it, it's definitely like a it's a balancing act like i think for me it's like there's the momentum thing you want to mm -hmm. make sure you take advantage of momentum but then there's the other side of that coin where it's like uh, a scary thing i went through last year was like when stuff started to do really well and like things were i like i guess all my content was doing really well and financially i was doing really well it was scary to get to the point where i'm like okay well i can either spend sunday with my family or with mckeely or doing personal things mm -hmm. Or I can work on my business. And if I make that decision, how much money am I losing not doing that? And yeah. I think that's a scary thing you kind of have to be careful of with that momentum stuff. It's like you can't you can't burn the candle too long because it will come back to bite you. Yeah. And I think there's like, it is just like the reality of creative work. There's always going to be a side of it where you are responsible for everything you do. So part of that mm -hmm. goes on to, you know, you're going to be, I guess the pressures are going to be on in situations where the opportunities do arise. Mm. But yeah, you have to be you have to be careful not to, I guess, burn yourself out. Burn yourself, yeah. But it happens. It happens yeah, to all it does. Of us. It does. Let's just backtrack for a <laughs> second. I knew it was, this is gonna get it really okay. awesome. Yeah. Um, for people who don't know who you are, for, first of all, welcome. If you if you don't know who am I, I'm the host of the Creative Grid Podcast, a space committed. 
to help creative entrepreneurs become the <laughs> best possible version of themselves and accomplish anything they want in life. Basically, just crush reality. So, and we usually have extraordinary guests, individuals as guests. And today is not exception. Today, I'm the less prepared I've ever been because I actually had no idea if this was going to happen. So I don't even have an intro writing for him, but I know him very well <laughs> because I've been following him for a while. And he's a creative entrepreneur. He's a filmmaker. He's a former podcaster. We'll talk about <laughs> that too. And, and basically, he's a content creator that is crushing it in everything he's doing. So I'm, we're going to learn a lot today. Buckle up and get your notepads together. Please welcome the legend, Tom <laughs> Noski. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having me yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to do this and i'm glad we got to do it because mm. yeah i mean we're both very very busy at the moment mm, you guys mm. are down here for a reason you haven't mm. just come down to melbourne for a holiday mm. so you had to make it work it's like 6 30 p.m on a thursday <laughs> yeah, so pretty much yeah. yeah you guys come straight here from the shoot and you'll be shooting again tomorrow so mm. i appreciate your time and, mm. and yeah i'm glad we got to make it work yeah, no, that, as I said, man, thank you, because I wasn't sure if this was going to happen. <laughs> but Tom, can you explain to people who you are and mm. what, where are you at this stage in life? How do you get here? Tell us about you. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's a loaded question. Um, I, I guess like right now, I would describe myself as kind of, I guess, a creative solopreneur. Like I, I like the idea of being a one person business. That's kind of something I've uh, started to identify as lately um, obviously I have people that help me but for the most part it's like a one person business model that I have set up so I guess a creative solopreneur is my identity at the moment but I I sort of just a creative like for the, the last six years 20, 27 the end of 2017 was when I went full time for the first time um, but that's come in many different shapes and forms when it first started it was freelance videography for athletes and sports teams and gyms and all that sort of stuff because i used to be a personal trainer and then that shaped into a wedding business and then that shaped into corporate stuff and everything in between and then throughout the years i've kind of i guess something that I, i'm sure we'll touch on at some point but it's like i've always kind of wanted i've always refined what i wanted and i was always looking for the next thing that i wanted as like not so much, a, a, I guess, a transition away from what I was doing, but more so I was always going like, what do I like? What do I don't like? How can I do more of what I like? And I think I've finally now gotten to the point where it's it's mostly or with the exception of very few things, it's basically the only things that I do are things that I want to do, uh, which is obviously a very privileged situation mm -hmm. to be in. But it's taken, I guess, a few years to build up to that point. And, and my business now is... I guess, education, social media, content creation. Um, and yeah, it's been a whirlwind because like the last 12 months, I only really came back to content creation in July of last year. So I took, COVID was a bit of an interesting time. Like I, before then I was a digital artist and a content creator in that space. And then my filmmaking was just my work. Um, and it just got to the point with COVID and then a bunch of other factors, life got in the way and all that sort of stuff where I was just like, I don't know if I really want to do this anymore. Uh, so I took a few years off, uh, went and did an Ironman, got obsessed with that space and endurance sport and as people who follow me know. And then uh, came back last year with kind of the mindset of, I guess a little bit of fuck it. Like I just kind of came back and I was like, I'm not going to do this unless I enjoy everything that I make and unless I only do the things that I want to do um, and that's led me to what I'm doing now where it's very much I guess I wouldn't even call myself like a creative content creator anymore it's just a personal brand yeah. um, so I guess that's what I do at the moment it's hard to describe what mm -hmm. I do I always have mm -hmm. a hard time describing mm -hmm. what I do especially since it's so um, so abstract <laughs> mm, yeah. like how I make money is I try to make money through making products and then marketing those products. And it's very abstract in the way that yeah. I do things. So yeah. it's hard for me to then go, I'm a filmmaker because I'm not really a filmmaker. I'm, I'm a content creator. Well, yeah. I'm not really a content creator. <laughs> so it's it can be, yeah, it can be weird trying yeah. to describe what I do. Yeah. So when I first found about you, you were doing what you were saying, like digital art, basically. Mm. You were doing a lot of Photoshop. And like, I remember this, 
pinky scotch <laughs> thing. You were known for that. Like yeah, everything yeah. was looking like that. Yeah. Um, and a lot of like Photoshop, really high level Photoshop stuff. Yeah. So what happens? Why why did you stop doing that mm. and you transition to what you're doing now? I always saw myself as doing something that was, uh, I guess, I always admired like, I guess the early influences on YouTube, like that was something that I never watched TV. I always watched YouTube as a kid mm. and I, I'm 26 now. So that would have been in like early days, like 2011, 2012, mm. 2013. So like the creators that were around then, are, you know, now have multi-million dollar mm. businesses and mm. all that sort of stuff. So I, I really admired that space and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was like a pretty terrible student. I struggled at school and I wasn't like a kid that I wasn't a kid that kind of fucked off and didn't try. The the shitty part about it is I was a kid who actually tried a lot and didn't get the results I wanted. So it was kind of like school never really made sense to me in that aspect. Like I would put put effort in and I wouldn't get results out. Um, but the only place like I would put effort in and get results out was creativity. So I loved painting. I loved art. I loved drawing. I loved that creative mm. stuff. And then I also loved fitness. So like mm. I was quite a big kid when I was, I was like 20 kilos heavier in high school than I am now. Wow. So I was just like obsessed with that world Yeah. Um, when I was younger. And those were like the two things where I was like, okay, if I put effort in, I get results out. Mm-hmm. But nothing else really kind of works. So mm. my first year out of school, I took a year off to uh, do personal training um, because I didn't, yeah, again, didn't really know what I wanted to do. I didn't really relate to any of my friends. Like I had a hard time growing up sort of, I guess, connecting with people around me because I didn't really fucking know what I was doing. Like I didn't have an, like I didn't know who I truly wanted to be. Um, And then through, I guess, diving back into because I, I, I really thought I was like, okay, I'll do, I'll do personal training and then I might study nutrition and I might go on to then do strength and conditioning or whatever. And I just fell out of love with it. I was like, no, I don't really want to do this anymore. Mm. So around 2016, when I first decided to do this, it was just a case of I looked online and I was like, well, who's doing this? Peter McKinnon and a bunch of other people. Mm. And then I was just like, well, if they can do it, I can do it. Yeah. For the first time in my life, I was like, oh, I can be an artist if I want to be. Uh, because before that point, it was like I was good at art, but there was never anything that I could do yeah. with that. Um, so then I did that for a while. And I think I kind of fell into it. And as a result, I think people thought that that was like, it was really, I love doing it. And I mm. love making art. And I love that mm. process of expressing myself creatively. But it wasn't what I wanted to do end game. Mm. And I think it took me a long time to realize that I wanted more, but I was incapable of doing what I do now. I wasn't capable of doing when I first started. Mm. So it was almost like, I I guess I would consider, this is like a really roundabout way of me explaining it, but like Mm. digital art and photography was a gateway drug into me being confident enough to do what I do now. So like Mm. talking on camera and being, I guess, a personal brand, Mm. I didn't have like the confidence to do it i was shy i was introverted i really struggled on camera it was like talking on my story the idea of having a social media account where i actually had a goal of gaining yeah. followers was like a really weird thing it wasn't something that i ever expected me to do so yeah. i guess all those years of doing that although from the outside it probably looks like i've gone and pivoted yeah. into what i'm doing now it very much in my perspective feels like i guess a natural progression like for Mm. me that this was always the goal Mm. and there's goals i have further like i want to keep doing this i'm sure two years from now i'll probably doing this in a way that doesn't even resemble what i'm doing now yeah but i think i needed to learn that i can build an audience learn that i can be creative learn to express myself online and then eventually learn to express myself authentically Mm -hmm. so it's like the content that i make now is basically a like it was a refining down of the filters so it was like photography was a way for me to express myself Mm. digital art was an easier way for me to express myself because it was just like i could come up with the idea Mm. i didn't have to travel i didn't have to do anything i could just make it and then it was like okay me speaking to camera and writing and talking about my feelings talking about my thoughts and expressing my experiences that's a more refined version with less filters than digital art So it's like, it's always, the goal has always been self-expression, but it's been a process of, I guess, removing the filters between what I think and what I eventually say. 
And I feel like I'm sort of even now still trying to refine that down. Even the last like few months, I've kind of gone from making stuff that's very like composed and very cinematic and very whatever. Mm. And it's like now there's no filter. It's like I just get on camera and talk. Yeah. And there's barely any editing anymore, to be honest. So it's it's a constant process. And I think although from the outside, it probably looks like, yeah, digital artists to I guess what I'm doing now. It's, if, for me, it felt like a very natural progression. And then it was just like, it was a case of, I think I just realized that I don't, I can't compete with people that are obsessed with that. Yeah. I like, there's a big yeah. theme in my life, I think recently where I like going off and doing my Iron Man. I realized that obsession is so important. Mm-hmm. Like being mm-hmm. obsessed is like, there's everyone talks about like passion and interest and enjoyment mm. and all that sort of stuff. It's like, no, you have to be obsessed to do it well. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it was like, I realized that because it was at the peak of my training, I was, you know, moving for 25 to 30 hours a week. And it's like, you don't do that unless you're obsessed. Yeah. And I realized that and I was like, fuck, I need to figure out a way to do that in my work. And I just wasn't that obsessed with it. Yeah. It was like, I've got friends in my life, like Ju- Visuals of Julius is a good friend of mine. Yeah. Um, he makes incredible Photoshop art online. His yeah. obsession is digital art and 3D art and all that sort of stuff. All he ever wants to do is make art. I don't. Yeah. And I realized that and I was like, I can't compete with Julius. Yeah. I need to do something where people can't compete with me. Exactly. And it's like, what am I obsessed with? I'm obsessed with talking. I'm obsessed with sharing myself. I'm, ex- I'm obsessed with self-expression. Mm. And I think that it was always a goal to refine it down to get to what I'm doing now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very convoluted and very <laughs> esoteric way of me explaining yeah. how I pivoted from digital art to what I'm doing now. But yeah, I feel like, I feel because like, I get that question a lot actually recently. Like I've had a, a few people reach out and they're like, they're like, they'll say something along the lines of like, are you still creating art for you? Are you still like making stuff that speaks to you? Yeah. And I think they saw, they see like, my digital art and they're like that's so like expressive and original mm, and whatever and mm. it's like then you talk in a camera about perfectionism yeah. it's like that's not and i yeah. answer them i'm like that wasn't an outlet me my outlet is getting my bike and going for a ride or yeah. going for a run yeah that's my outlet yeah. when i make my content it's like that's my obsession it's yeah. like it's two, it's two different things i think self-expression and being i guess like artsy and creative it's like mm. those two things don't need to be sort of tied into one another yeah but anyway i've just kind of snowboarded this no no that's good <laughs> i love you it speak. yeah no 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 i love it dude i knew that yeah i get into understand why you do what you do is it's awesome yeah um and i completely agree with that what you said that right there you nailed it like obsession is mm. everything in whatever you want to do if you want to dominate if you oh, want yeah. to, if you want to dominate in whatever it is whether it's digital art being a youtuber being a having a video production business or whatever you need to be obsessed yeah like, that's why i tell people like it's impossible for me like i'm my biggest competition yeah you know like i it's it, the level that i do this stuff it's unreal and I've, i haven't met that many people just like you or, mm. or a couple of the friends that i have that are that level of obsessed that all we do mm. i wake up at 5 a.m every day just mm. to smash work yeah. you know when, when people are sleeping my competition is yeah. sleeping yeah. when they just had a night out when you know they're, they're maybe even not fully in in the job they're still having a, a, a like a main job and this is their hustle Mm. i'm working i'm yeah. getting shit done you know you yeah. can't compete with me you know yeah, yeah. and not only that i'm be- firstly i was obsessed with getting great at my craft but now i'm also obsessed with getting better at myself mm. i'm i'm on top of the business side of things yeah. which i want to talk to you about because yeah, that, that's awesome. one of the biggest things that creatives don't learn until very late until they can't pay shit until they <laughs> need to go back to whatever job they were doing because they they understand like now oh I'm great at making videos, but I'm yeah. not making a full-time living. Or yeah. every, where is my money? They're, they're so bad with money and they're, they, they pay the profit they make on jobs, if they even make profit. Because most creatives, I bet you, they don't even have a profit margin with yeah. their jobs. <laughs> you know, they don't yeah, take yeah, profit yeah. into account and overheads and all this stuff. Yeah. So, like, I'm on, so on top of everything that I'm just like, man, I'm my biggest competition. You know, <laughs> like, it's hard for me to meet people that are doing these things at the level that I'm doing it. Yeah. In, and in different areas, you yeah. know, like, because it's, it's not only... Yeah, I, I tell people lately, like, even, let's say, a video production, 
your video skills are probably twenty mm. percent of yeah. what it is. You know what's more important? Relationships. You yeah. know what's more important than that? Business. You know what's important than that? Sales and marketing. Yeah. You know what's more important? You know, you know, there's always something. I can tell you a gazillion things. Invoicing. Yeah. How, how to track your stuff. How to know your expenses. How to, you know, apps, different apps that you can use to have the proper systems and processes in place. Yeah. There's a gazillion things that are more important than how to make yeah. a cinematic video. You know? So yeah. So yeah what, why do you think there is a lot of creators? Because I rarely, honestly, meet creators that are killing it. Yeah, I oh, think in, it's... In, in terms of leaving, making a full-time living and being, you know, making decent money and, mm, you know, mm. what do you think that is? I think, it, first of all, it takes, I think it, I have this is a classic saying of like, if you're going to be an artist, you're going to be broke for six years. Mm. And it's like, I didn't think I was that because I, I used to freelance mm. and I thought I was doing okay. And then I hit six years in my business recently. And then the last 12 months have been what they have. And I'm like, oh, right. I was broke for six years <laughs> yeah. like, compared yeah. to what I'm Same. doing now. Yeah. So it's like, I think it, there's, there's that. It takes a long time mm. to build the skills that you need mm. to build. And as you said, it's like, it's not just about being good on video. Mm. It's not good, just enough to be a good creator or even it's not just enough to be a good networker. You have to constantly refine all those things mm -hmm. i think the other thing as well is like you have to find searching for the thing is just as important as the thing i think a lot mm -hmm. of people like being a i guess a full-time creative has become a sexy job mm -hmm. so it's like it's a it's something that people want to do social media in particular and i think that they like people find something they find what works or they find something that works kind of mm -hmm. and then they'll settle and go okay well this is good enough i don't really enjoy it i'm not actually as mm -hmm. obsessed as i should be but i'll figure it out like i'll try and work make it work mm -hmm. and i think the best thing you can do in those situations is like continue to search for the thing invest just as much time in searching for the thing that suits you as you mm -hmm. do in the thing and what i mean by that is like i'm not going to compete with you as being like a video production owner Mm. I used to do that and I know I'm not like mm. I'm not a good networker I love mm. sitting in this room for 12 mm. hours a day mm. I fucking hate having to pack all this gear up and go on a shoot like I've done like one freelance job in the last year and it was like I love the process and I love working on yeah. the video I hate packing everything into my car oh, trust me, I don't it. like the pack I hate, <laughs> I hate like the process of trying to negotiate with people in meetings and all that sort of stuff it's like I don't enjoy that stuff mm. so I knew for me I knew deep down it was like I have to figure out where I can go from here to make it better. How can I continue to refine this thing that I do to find the next thing that makes it the thing that I actually want to do? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of creatives settle. They'll go like, okay, I'm a wedding videographer. That's all I can do. It's like, well, why can't you be like an educator? Why can't you be more of a content creator? Why can't you do YouTube? Why can't you do more? Why can't you make this a thing that you get to be, I guess, like that's the thing. It's like, it might be a small change from like digital art, for example. I made like a good living, I guess, from it, but I wasn't obsessed with it. It's like the stuff I make now, it's like it's easy for me to make the money I do. And then it's like the the difference between someone who's the difference between someone who really enjoys what they do and they're obsessed with it and someone who's like kind of is like you might make a really good video, be good with your clients, and then manage your business really, really yeah. well. But you're not going to then figure out better ways to be better at sales. You're not then going to reinvest time into learning about marketing. You're not then going to invest more time in learning new skills. You're not going to manage a team because you don't, your baseline level for, I guess, tolerance or enjoyment is low. Mm. It's like if I, I, to, I hate to bring it back. Well, I don't hate to. I love bringing it back to this, but like I sound like a broken record a lot with endurance sport, but it's like if I hate running and then someone else loves running, the difference between me and them competing in a marathon is not how much training we do. It's the fact that this person loves it. So their training's fine. Yeah. At the end of the training week, they recover really well. They eat yeah. really, really well. They sleep really, really well. Yeah. Whereas my energy needs to be put into just getting the training done. So by yeah. the time that yeah. I finish my training week, I can't be fucked rolling out. Yeah. I can't be fucked stretching. I can't yeah. be bothered doing all this sort of stuff. It's like obsession carries you further because you've got a baseline yeah. tolerance for what you do. You clearly love what you do. And that means that you invest time in your team. There's four cameras here. Like you bought four cameras into my house to film a podcast. It's like someone who's obsessed, someone who's not obsessed would have shown up with a microphone and maybe one camera and called it a day. 
But I think like if you can continue to refine the thing, if you continue to search for the thing that makes you happy and actually like brings you fulfillment and joy, then you can invest that time mm. back into being more obsessed with it. It's like the thing I said a while ago. It's like grinding is stupid. You don't grind. You find what you really enjoy and then invest so much time into it that the point, like to the point where other people will see you as grinding. <laughs> I see your job as grinding. Mm. You probably see my job as grinding. Mm. I don't see what I do as grinding at all. And I'm sure you don't see what you do as grinding at all because you enjoy this it. Is a, this is a thing I, I tell people though because I think a lot of people will see you or see me or whoever and they're like, oh man, like, you know, they, they obviously love everybody. There's stuff within the process that is fucking annoying. Oh, of course. Of you course. Know, like, don't get me wrong. Yeah. 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 There's stuff even though, like, here's the thing, like because of the passion, obsession, you know, like this is what we know we're meant to do and yeah. it's our contribution to society and all these things because in the end is this is so much bigger than me. like I, I don't do this for me yeah it's cool whatever mm. but i'm doing this for other people yeah. i'm trying to create this stuff that is gonna help young nelson like yeah. you said you love yeah. this too okay? yeah. and, and you gave a good explanation of it make content for your old version of yourself yeah the tom of five years ago the nelson of five years ago yeah. man five years ago i wish i had access to someone like yeah, me exactly. i tell everyone right now like man if i had the closest relationship to someone like me who yeah. the fuck knows where i would be yeah. i'll tell you what i'll yeah. be financially free by now yeah of course. Yeah. Of course. i know so much stuff right now that i'm just like god damn it i would have been financially free a while ago you know i'm about <laughs> to turn 30 yeah. and now i'm aiming i'm i do my my life in five year blocks yeah so it took me five years to become a dentist it took me five years to earn my place in australia learn a second language and get a residence here now I'm giving five years to become financially mm. free and a millionaire and all this stuff. Yeah. So it just, and by the way, just because it's a bunch of things of why exactly money, but basically you need money. <laughs> you need money too. I don't think there's anything wrong with being motivated yeah. by money. Yeah. I think that's a yeah. stupid point. I think the perspective of being motivated by money is it makes you short-sighted with your decisions. Mm. One of the best things that I heard recently recently best thing i heard from a friend of mine a few years ago who's a freelance filmmaker as well he now has a production company all that mm. sort of stuff he said to me he's like we aren't motivated by money because we want to buy a house or a car or have nice things we're motivated by money because we want to buy our freedom mm -hmm. if i was motivated by having a nice house i would have been a lawyer mm. but i'm not i'm yeah. motivated by freedom yeah. because i get the opportunity to over the last six years i've built a business that affords me the opportunity to do whatever i want mm -hmm. on a daily basis mm -hmm. and make a great living doing so but yeah. it took those six years to get to here so mm -hmm. i think like being motivated by money or saying you're not motivated by money it's like i think you're either lying to yourself or you're being naive to the fact that it, of how important it is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like money i think is an interesting one like you can't ignore it but you also yeah you can't let it dictate your decisions and mm. then it's also the whole thing of like i think it's stupid because people don't realize if you want to make money on social media you have to try to make money on social media it doesn't happen by accident mm. same with freelancing it's like you don't make videos and then someone comes to you and goes hey do you want to film this for 10 grand it's like you know you yeah. you, work you work to yourself, build those yeah, relationships yeah. you build your clientele you build your skills you build your team mm. you build your marketing mm. and then you have the opportunity to and I think it's the same thing with social media. It's like you don't post on Instagram and then a couple a couple grand shows up in your bank account. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. work like yeah. that. Like yeah. you have to try to make money yeah. and part of that is being focused on money. Yeah. Like it's just like the bare minimum to make that happen. Yeah. And and someone I've spoke to and, and this is wild. Like I highly suggest you actually start getting your <laughs> shit together and start paying attention to money cuz guess what? Mm money is energy and money doesn't go to someone that is not looking for it no. and people who are this is one of the biggest lies people tell to poor people and especially like i grew up in just a standard family in a third mm. world country venezuela and other stuff and one of the biggest lies we're always told is that if you want money you're evil you know so if you want money if you're looking for money you're yeah. gonna be unhappy you're gonna they people made this all this bullshit to make you believe that if you're hunting for money you're, you're an evil human yeah. being you're never gonna make it big and all stuff 
guess what? <laughs> Everyone you know that has made it big was looking for money. Yeah, yeah. Money yeah. didn't just came by accident. Yeah. All the people you know in your close circle, if you even know someone, I met a lot of people with financial freedom and millionaires in the past year. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you, all of them were looking for money. Yeah. All of them had to deconstruct the beliefs of like following money is evil. And you're not gonna get money if you're not looking for it. I've learned that the hard way. For the longest time, I was like, I'm gonna get so good at making videos that money's just gonna come to me. People are just gonna come to me with massive deals. No, man, it doesn't, it doesn't happen, happen like that. You need to be hunting for it. You need to want money. You need to have a good reason I have found as well for why you want money. Like you were saying, freedom. Yeah. Is exactly that. I'll tell you what, if you just want a, a real expensive car, expensive house, once you get it, I've got made very good money with what I'm doing. Mm. And it, like this, no, my lifestyle is the same. Yeah. Because guess what? I keep my freedom gap. You know, I make a lot of money, but I keep my expenses the same. Yeah. So I have all that freedom gap to be able to do stuff like this. Yeah. And right now it's not making money, but I don't care. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. am able to pay my producer. I'm able to, you know, afford doing this shit yeah. and being at peace. You know, like there's so many things that you need money for, yeah. you know, that, that to, to be able to do. How much money are you making right now with what you're doing? <laughs> Do you want the honest answer? I want I, the honest I, answer. It it floats between somewhere between thirty and forty thousand a month at the moment. Isn't that ridiculous? It's explain crazy. explain what what exactly is making you that? Like what it's, are this today? Yeah, the, it's the crazy. So it's it so it floats between twenty twenty to thirty thousand dollars is coming from I guess my base level of products. Um, so like my LUTs, presets, that sort of stuff. That is Everything like ridiculous. That. Uh, <laughs> probably somewhere between somewhere between like eight to 10 comes here and there from sponsorships and brand deals and that sort of stuff. Oh. I'm saying yes to them less often now because again, it comes back to that thing. It's like, I've just realized that if like longevity is the play, like if I'm still doing this in five to 10 years, it's like, where can I be? who knows like i could be stratospheric in five to ten years and the thing that'll stop you from doing that is doing things that you don't enjoy and one of the things that i don't really enjoy is brand deals it's also like the brand equity thing i'd rather every single time someone goes to my page and is given an ad it's for a product from me yeah. rather than they go to my page they're given a brand deal and then the next day they're given my product uh, so that's like my i guess my recurring revenue and then my cohorts um, usually bring in between thirty and forty thousand dollars each time I do them. So that's like, yeah, you know, I'll only launch for a two week period, but obviously I'll do those a couple of times a year. So it floats between like if you average it out over the year, it's probably yeah, but somewhere between thirty and fifty thousand Australian. So like twenty five, yeah. twenty five to thirty US, something like that. Twenty to thirty US, I yeah. think. How how crazy does that sound to you now? Like if you were to tell, because this is not that long, though, no, right? No, how no. long have you been making this kind of money? Probably the last seven or eight months. Yeah. If you would tell yourself a little bit before that, yeah, like, hey, crazy. you will be making, what, what would you say to that? Well, I was like 15 grand in credit card debt in June last year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. to know. Yeah. 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 I had, to be fair, I had like investments and stuff. I had some crypto and some, yeah. uh, like, I have like a pretty decent amount invested in the SP and all that yeah. sort of stuff. Like, yeah. I'm very strict in that side of things. Uh, so I didn't have nothing, but I kind of decided, I was like, well, I've got a credit card with a twenty thousand dollar limit. Yeah. I'm just gonna spend that to get myself to Cairns for my Iron Man and then I'll figure it out afterwards. Did it which cost is you fifteen K to do that? Oh, my Iron Man probably cost me about eighty thousand dollars total to no do. No way. Yeah. Wait, why why so much? Because it took me two and a half years to do. So just like between if I add it all up, between like travel, oh that's probably a bit bit of an exaggeration. Probably like forty grand. That's to still do. a crazy yeah. amount of money. What? Yeah, just between like the bike is like ten thousand dollars. Like nutrition throughout the whole time that I was doing it. Like I guess like travel, paying for cars, paying for accommodation. Like I flew my family to all these races and stuff like that to do that. So it was just like. And then registrations like a thousand dollars each time you race and stuff like that. So it's just crazy. Wow. Um, I kind of like it was a gradual climb so like covid meant that i had two canceled races so it's like the first race was like i'm gonna do this to just try and finish mm -hmm. second race was like i'm gonna take this seriously and by the third time i was like i'm here to Smash. i'm here to do something yeah. so then it was like i'm happy to invest a bit more money so mm -hmm. i didn't even buy the bike until like the 
and until the second one got cancelled and then I was yeah, like, okay, okay, let's actually commit to this. Um so it was pretty expensive, but that that amount of money is just like yeah, that amount of money is just it's weird. You have to tread a line between like understanding what that is and then also simultaneously understanding that you like there's a difference between like just because you make a decent amount of money in a short period of time doesn't mean you're going to continue to do that forever so like a big thing that i've sort of sort of learned from experiences growing up and all that sort of stuff is like it can all go to zero yep. faster than you expect yeah. and i think you have to continuously i guess drive forward and i like i trade the line between like like trying to I invest a lot of my money back into my team, back into my expenses, back into my gear, back into yeah. subscriptions. Like this new cohort's costing me, I think a couple, like four or five grand to run. Yeah. Uh, that, and I don't even have a team for it yet. So it's like, there's definitely my investments on that side of things. But like you said, I try to keep my expenses low to try and yeah. I guess mitigate that. But I know there's, I do have some friends that I guess are on the other side of this for a few years. And I think there is a place you get to where that stress of the financial thing is gone but i think as a general thing it's like the money will go up and your anxiety for financial stress will stay exactly the same mm. i think it's just like the way it is yeah um but it is bizarre yeah bizarre. man it sounds wild when you say it that way like it, what's what's the product that's making the most money well the lots make the most money consistently so they bring in they probably make like 12 to 15 sales mm. a day every day uh, and then depending on like periods of like right now I'm promoting the, the cohort yeah. so they've dropped off a little bit but to be honest like I think like four and a half thousand people own those now so I'm making a lot wow. of just word of mouth so yeah. there's a lot of people that are like have you got these lots you should yeah. get these I imagine a lot of sales are just coming in from like the network of people that yeah, like it, 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 it almost reaches I guess a velocity that it's just like there's so many people that have them so there's so many people using them there's so many people that are sharing them around and then yeah. people buy them and whatnot so they make the most amount of money recurring and then obviously like the cohorts because they're a much more expensive product yeah. um they do like exceptionally well i think yeah this latest one is like i think they've made it's made like 25 grand so far that's awesome um in the last week and then yeah which is fucking crazy and then like <laughs> the, that'll keep yeah. going for another week and then yeah hopefully it'll be somewhere near 40 or 50 by yeah. the end so yeah it's a mix between like segmented products that i release yeah. every so often and then obviously consistent products that just come out whenever you said you have a bunch of expenses when mm. it comes to something like this that you're doing your workshops and yeah. you're expending like four to five k what exactly are those expenses? All the back end. So everything that runs the business is quite expensive. So like uh, like the cohort is hosted on a platform called Circle, which costs like $1,000 a year to run mm. or maybe a little bit, probably closer to two grand Australian to run mm. per year. Uh, like things like just by the time you've got it set up. So like Zapier, ConvertKit, all the things that mm. I guess do all the marketing automations, ManyChat, uh, there's a bunch more like automations that i've got on the website the website hosting like everything just adds up um i i would love to i would love to get to the point where i guess i'm i have a team behind doing this as well so mm -hmm. i think like for the next one i'll probably reinvest most of this money back into mm -hmm. like i guess a, a cohort manager who their mm -hmm. whole responsibility is community management and all yeah. that sort of stuff i would love to have guest teachers so the the idea for this one is like i teach four classes I think it would be awesome for the next one to have like 10 classes total, but they're five each week yeah. for two weeks and I teach two and someone else teaches three per week. Yeah, um, nice. That would be awesome because then that just opens the scope for yeah. everything to be done. And then I think like having guest like teachers as well. So like having big creators come on and I'll pay them obviously to come in yeah. and we'll do an exclusive cohort Q&A nice. and stuff. But nice. I think like the general thing, if I like, have, if I have any advice for people doing what I do, and I obviously try to teach this to as many people as possible, and the things that I do, like my cohorts and stuff, is like, what you do when you start is not going to look like what you want it to. It's always going to be less. Like I think a lot of people get overwhelmed when they look at a creator who's like, don't look at what I do now and go, how can I do that? Because I have an editor that edits seven videos a week. I have an animator that edits one to two per week. I have a videographer who was here before who helps me shoot. I have like 
all the things that support my business. And then also like my products are iterations and iterations yeah. of the product. I'm onto my third like full rebuild of my entire business infrastructure, moving it from like Gumroad to then Shopify. And then what we're doing now, it's like, it's just the only way that I got here is by doing and then progressing over time. It's like this cohort that just launched yeah. that's like like a $300, $400 product. It's four lessons. It's over two weeks. There's a live community. There's all sorts of stuff integrated into it being a really stressful product for me to build was a 45-minute live yeah. cohort. Like it was a live yeah. workshop yeah. back in like September of last year. Yeah. And it's like I only get here from that. Yeah. And I sold that for like $59 for people to join for like an hour mm. and that was like really easy ran on luma which is like a free software did it on zoom and then just that was it mm. and then that went into number two and then eventually for this one it was like okay well i need this to be bigger because i i i said it's like i kind of like to go off my uh my nervous energy is a good indicator of whether i should do something I think a lot of people see their imposter syndrome and they let it impact their ability to do stuff. They'll go like, I, I feel like I'm not adequate or capable enough to do this. So they don't do it. I've kind of realized that, again, it comes back to this endurance stuff. It's like the workouts where I didn't want to do them were always the workouts where I was like, I need to do this one. This one's super important. And I've brought that into my work in the sense like before the work, first workshop time to build, it was like I was so nervous before the first one. Like I was... Yeah. anxious and sweating i spent like literally like four days before it all day and i mean all day yeah. doing nothing but working on the presentation so it's like yeah. all the slides were yeah. like everything was like organized and i was like make sure it worked me and mckeely were up until like uh, we go to bed at like nine so 11 p.m is very 8 late mate. 8 <laughs> 11 p.m is very late for yeah. us we're up until 11 p.m the night before making sure it all worked on zoom so making sure the cameras synced up and all that yeah. sort of stuff i was so nervous yeah. It did really well. Feedback was amazing. We went on to the second one. It was like, I was slightly less nervous because I'd done it before. Yeah. And then by the time I got around to thinking about doing the third one in that format, I was like, yeah. I don't feel nervous at all. And then I thought, I was like, well, how can I feel nervous again? Make it what it is now. And then this makes me feel super anxious. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, this is a good spot to be in. Yes. And then eventually, like two from now, it might be like, okay, well, how can I make this bigger? That's yes. when I hire a team. That's when everything yeah. kind of grows from there. Um, so yeah it's it's ridiculous to be honest but i think like the general through point is like it's not going to look like the way you want to at the start you have to start anyway so your content's not going to look how you want it to your like products aren't going to be the way you want them to you're probably going to be doing it on a shitty platform that doesn't allow you much customization your products probably aren't going to be great at the start but that's okay because you can iterate on it and you can give people that buy it almost treat them like your you know your true believers and it's like reward those people yes. go okay if you bought a shitty product from me and it wasn't that good i'm going to send you a better one when it is good yeah. and you can do all that sort of stuff after the fact you yeah. don't need to come out guns blazing from the yeah. start and then also the other thing is like lean into that anxious feeling lean yes. into the nervous yes. energy and go okay if i feel nervous before something that's probably a pretty good indication that i'm doing the right stuff i completely agree with that and and that just makes me think like i always have seen in my life, in my own experience, that every time I'm dancing within that limit of comfort zone and discomfort mm. zone, mm. that's the right spot to be. There's a, a, a saying that goes somewhere like, when when it's scary to jump, that's when you, you need to jump. jump. You yeah. know? And, and it's completely true. Like you can't, you can calculate everything you want. You can try to predict some sort of result and all this stuff, but reality is that you can only grow to become a better version of yourself if you're actually doing something that yeah. scares you. You shouldn't do something stupid that might no. be make you go bankrupt or lose your job or whatever, depending on what it is exactly, or make you injure if you're, we're talking training, but you should definitely be looking at it just being outside the limit, yeah you know yeah though no, i mean the bigger the risk the bigger the reward mm. obviously like the risk you never want to oh what is it like the alex Mosey you quote like risk multiplied by zero is zero mm. like if okay. sorry I know something like that his, his quotes, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like basically the saying is like anytime you bet the farm you are going to be wrong one of mm. those times yeah. so don't bet the farm but you can lean into that nervous energy and go, yeah. okay, well, how can I sort of push the boundaries here? How can I do something that makes me feel anxious? How yeah. can I, like one of the things that I'm doing right now with my content is like, I'm turning my opinions up to 11. 
because I want the negative feedback because I'm almost viewing the negative feedback as like, mm-hmm. okay, this is an indication that I'm actually touching people's emotions. I pinch a nerve. Yeah, I'm pinching yeah. a nerve. Yeah. So it's like if I'm getting... It, here's what, how I think about it. I was actually having this conversation last night with a friend of mine. It's like, if I post content and it gets like, oh, this is cool in the comments, it's like, that's one thing. If I post content that gets a lot of really good, long, positive feedback, that's another thing. Yeah. If I post something that's so striking and so emotional yeah. that I get paragraphs of negative feedback, yeah. it's like, okay, clearly Here I've done something. something that the people who love really love. And it's like, it's a fine line. It's like, yeah. if I... If I say something stupid and then people are like, you're wrong about this, then obviously you need to take that into account. But if you say something and people are like, I don't believe this at all, blah, 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 blah. It's like clearly there's, it's like the the worst place you can be. The opposite of love is indifference. Mm. It's like you don't want to have an audience of people that go, eh, I don't really care about that. Yeah. You want an audience of people that go, I love this yeah. or I hate this. Yeah. You don't want to be in between. Yeah. So it's I, I think like that's something again where I'm uncomfortable about that. That's yeah. really weird to put yeah. out content where I'm like, I know this is gonna get yeah. negative feedback. I know in the morning yeah. when I look at these comments, it's gonna be filled with people angry at yeah. me. And it's like that's just the way it is. And and yeah, I, co- I completely agree with that too. And it, it's here's the thing. This is I've been telling a lot of people that that my goal is to make you think for yourself. Because mm. I think one of the main issues, if not the main issue for most people in the world is that they don't think for themselves. They're just reactive to what society is asking for them. And I used to be like mm. that as well. When I, I became a dentist, by the way, I'm a dentist. Yeah. Um, and it was all because society pushed me to do that. Mm. Everyone told me if I wanted to be important, if I want, didn't want it to struggle, if I wanted to be happy, if I wanted to mm. have a nice roof and family and all stuff, I needed to become important. And the way yeah. you do it, you either become a lawyer, doctor, engineer, um, dentist, whatever. Choose dentistry. And I know why now, like, because then I, I started to think for myself. And I was yeah. like, wait, why did I choose dentistry? Oh, my cousin was loved by everyone in my family. Blah, blah, blah. So I was thinking that in order for everyone to love me and, and think that I was special and all these things, I needed mm. to be a dentist. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. So am I happy with it? Yeah, okay. I'm good at it. I was really good at it. But am I obsessed with it? No, that's another thing. Yeah. Because then I started thinking of, Oh, there was this guy that we all thought he was crazy. Mm. His name was Jose. And everyone thought this motherfucker was crazy. Yeah. Everyone's like, dude, this guy, all he does is dentistry. His lips laid, he's it on, on the ass of every doctor all the time, like uh, asking questions. He's always talking to you about dentistry. He wakes up early to read dentist articles. He was obsessed. And mm. I guarantee you, I have no idea where he is, but I guarantee you he's still doing dentistry and he's crushing it. Yeah, I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if he's a millionaire and he's, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, doing yeah. great. Yeah. So that transfer to, oh, okay, so obs- obsession is yeah. necessary. You know? And like you have to, I guess, like keep, again, keep looking, spend as much time looking for the thing as you do investing in the mm. thing. Like keep looking for the thing that makes you happy. Keep looking for the thing that clicks and you're like, and you'll know it when you find it. Like you'll yep. know the thing and you're like, oh my God, this is what I enjoy yeah. doing. But it takes just as much time to find that as it does to build it. Yep. I think like a lot of people have this impression that they're just going to like try one of these key things. They're going to like, mm. and then also it's, I think a lot of people have to know it took me a long time because all I've ever known since I quit personal training was making money for myself. So it's very easy for me to then go, okay, well, I've had an accountant for like the last four years. I know the ins and outs of tax and I know the ins and outs of building a business and profit margins and gross and all that sort of stuff. I know how to make my own money. Even if it was like for years, it was making 50 to $70,000 and like just scraping by. I think like, I knew, I always know that I can. And a lot of people don't know they can. Like it took me having this moment where I was like, oh my God, it was a almost like a moment where I stepped outside and I was like, okay, I'm out now. There's a whole world out here where I get to make my own money. Yeah. I think a lot of people, like especially in our space, you have to almost reverse engineer how you got here and go, there's so many little things that people forget they're like oh be passionate be you know obsessed with the things that you do like focus on you know getting outside of your comfort zone it's like what does that mean like what does that actually mean for me i'm just a dude that works a job i don't know i can make my own living it's like i think you have to go okay well first you have to understand that you can then you have to figure out how to do it 
you can't figure out how to do it unless you know that you can yeah and i think a lot of people don't even know that they can like you can yes. just yes. freelance you can just have a youtube channel that makes adsense and that makes you money yeah. you can just work you know post on instagram for the next five years as your side hustle and build it up to the point where you have an audience of people that yeah. really respect you and then do brand deals and make a good yeah. amount of money like it's all possible yeah. but a lot of people don't know that yeah is that, that's the biggest thing like that switch of knowing that anything is possible yeah. so what can, what can you tell someone right now that's listening to this and feels identified with that thought what would you tell him to know that anything is possible well try it like try it you've got to prove it to yourself i think the thing for me is like i've always been a little bit of like an audacious kind of character and very ambitious so i always kind of saw i saw the glimmer and i was like okay that's enough by the I way think... i love that your vocabulary <laughs> not many people speak like it the way you do like and and you have a broad vocabulary. So cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm just job. like, I'm Good just job. a very introspective person. So yeah. it's like, I think a lot of introverts, I, I think a lot of introverts have this weird thing where I'm always having a conversation in my own head. Mm. So I'm socially exhausted talking to this guy. Oh, yeah. Same. So it's yeah. like, I think I've just, <laughs> I always I <laughs> am having this conversation in my own head. So by the time I say it, and then also like, I think another thing to, before I get onto what you said, it's like, I think when you, believe in the things that you're saying mm -hmm. then it's easy to say them like i spent years trying to figure out what i believed in and figuring out the things that i'm willing to die like i have hills that i'm going to die on like if i talk to you about perfectionism i will die on that hill we can argue about it and i will die on that hill yeah. but it's like it's something i believe in if we yeah. started talking about i don't know marketing I'd be like, okay, well, it's, I'm interested in it. It's mm. clearly a big part of my job, but it's not a hill I'm going to die on. Mm. So I might not be as articulate when mm. I talk about it. And I think like get passionate about the things that you say. Like mm. if you are going to do social media, if you are going to be, I guess, a personal brand, it's like figure out what those things are. You don't yeah. need many of them. Like you only need a few things that you really believe in that people can get behind. Like you can be known for one thing. Yeah. Like I think uh, there's a guy that I've um, I've become friends with on social media now. He's, his Instagram is Behavior Hack or Zach Prograb. I think is how you pronounce his name. Great follow, really yeah. like thought-provoking follow. And one of his things, his word is actually obsession. But one of his things is like, you should purposely try to be known for one word. Like you should pick one idea, one tiny yeah. section of the market yeah. and become known for that thing. Mm -hmm. And then everything else can kind of be peripheral to that idea but it's like i'm sure a lot of people bring me up in conversation not because of like my luts not because of like my desk setup or whatever they bring me up because they saw a perfectionism video that i've mentioned countless times and they're having an argument with a friend it's like well tom said this and blah blah yeah. blah it's like i like i've made that conscious yeah, decision yeah, i yeah. chose that i yeah. was like i want to be known for this yeah and it's like now i'm like okay well what other things can i become known for yeah. but to keep to bring it back to like I guess someone who's in that position, I think you have to try. Like set yourself the goal of trying. Mm. Like go like, okay, well, how, like I, I know web design. Could I get a web design client? Could I go and speak to my network of friends and figure out if someone's willing to pay me? Mm. Could I do something for free? Mm. And then from that, figure out a way to get paid. Mm. It's like, try it. Mm. Like you can't, I, like it comes back to the thing. It's like no one makes it work by accident like you're not gonna just like stumble across it one day and it's like i know that sounds so obvious but it didn't click for me for a very long time a one lot of the people think it doesn't click people think like dude you don't get fit by accident no you don't no. wake up and you're like oh, oh my god i'm so fit yeah, I, can't get, I have abs dude, yeah, this yeah. is crazy how yeah. did this no <laughs> you had to have conscious decisions and actions and behaviors yeah. to lead you to that result <laughs> yeah and you it's know? the same thing with it's the same thing with business it's like every time i I, like every time I make a product, it's a conscious decision I made because I want to grow my business. Yeah. I don't just like come up with this shit because I'm like, oh, well, that'd be fun. Mm -hmm. It's like, it, it's a conscious decision I make and it's a conscious effort. And I put effort into, I'm going to do this multiple times a year because I want to hit this revenue target. And mm -hmm. I think so many people fly blind. They're just like, well, like it'd be nice to do that one day. It's like, well, why not try it? Why not go, okay, for the next six months, I'm going to set myself the goal of, I'm going to try and build this business yeah. over the next six months. I'm going to go, okay, well, I have this goal of, fuck it, say, I'm going to build, I'm, I'm going to build $10,000 of my own money. 
who cares about getting your ABN if we're in Australia? Who cares about setting up your business, your LLC or whatever, wherever you are? Fuck all that. Just go out and be like, how can I get $10,000 worth of my own money that I made from my own skill? Set yourself that goal and just go and try it. Yeah. The worst thing that happens is it doesn't work. Yeah. The best thing that happens is it completely changes your life. Yeah. Like I think a good practice that I try to do in everything that I do is like, what is the actual worst case scenario? In most situations, it's not that bad. Yeah. So it's like if I, you know, it's like if I get a little bit too ambitious with one of my products that's like a little bit too big, too audacious, gets too many people on board, the worst thing that happens is if I have unhappy customers and I get sent them a refund. A refund. That's the <laughs> worst too. thing that happens. Yeah. The worst thing that can possibly happen yeah. is I send them a refund. Yeah. The best thing that happens is it completely changes my life. Yeah. It's like, well, I'd take that bet. Of course and, I would. Yeah, and, that, and that's human behavior, isn't it? You have to learn yeah. how to stop you from stopping yourself. Yeah. You know, you have to learn to recognize, okay, my brain is going to try to protect me and tell me that this is not safe, yeah. that this is too risky, that, yeah. and he's going to focus me on thinking on what could go wrong. Yeah. But guess what? If you do a slight switch to mm. be like, oh, th this is what could go wrong. This is what could go right. Yeah. These are the things that we could learn out of this. It's awareness too. I think it's like a big thing for me is like I know I am, I know I had a tendency to self-sabotage. So I yeah. knew I had a tendency to go like if something's going well, that would be when I was like, okay, well, can I do more? Can I do something yeah. else? Can I do something yeah. a bit different? It's like, yeah. why? Why? What you're doing is working. Why don't you yeah. just double down on it? Yeah. It's like that was a behavior where I was like, I didn't know why I did it for a very long time. I didn't even change anything. Obviously, like I see a therapist and like I've worked on that side of myself, but it's like, I didn't know why I did it. I didn't do anything to change. All I did is become consciously aware of the fact that most of the time I can't believe my own thoughts. So it's like, I need to go like, okay, if I think something and go, I don't believe you're capable of doing that. I already know not to trust him. So I can go, okay, well, that's a good indication that I'm capable of doing it. It's the same thing with the nervous energy thing. It's like, if if there's a voice in the back of my head that goes, don't do this, I know to go do it. Mm. And it's like, that's not because I have like some, it's not because I read a self-help book. It's not because I, you know, invest lots of money in a therapist. It's not because I've worked on this. It's because I'm aware of that behavior. Mm. So it's like, if you're someone who doubts yourself a lot, just go like, okay, I'm someone who doubts myself a lot. What do I need to do to not do that anymore? Do the opposite of what you feel when you doubt yourself. Mm. It's like, it's, it's, it is like an oversimplification of a very complex topic. But I think like in my own life, it's just been a case of like identifying your behaviors, figuring them out, being aware of them. And then next time they come up doing the opposite to what I would do in that situation. Because yeah. it is like ingrained behavior. Like if you, if you doubt yourself, that's because you've been doubting yourself for years. Mm -hmm. So just becoming a, like just trying to ignore it's not going to be enough. You have to consciously decide um so yeah i like i think it, like it, it, the, my advice to someone in that situation would be like set yourself a target mm. and just try it like yeah. the worst that's going to happen is it doesn't work yeah and and in order to get to that stage of belief like i generally generally today i think anything is fucking possible when i, yeah. when I mean every word yeah. i say in there i generally know i yeah, will do be a millionaire i can do whatever you want i can take vice creative as far as i want same with yeah. the podcast same with everything but in order to get there like Cormosi says mm -hmm. you need to have a stack of undeniable proof yeah. that you do what you do you know that you say yeah. you do the things that you say you're gonna do basically yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a combination. It's like actions come before beliefs. But beliefs also have to follow actions. Mm -hmm. I think like I heard that recently where someone was like, there's very talented people who still doubt themselves. So it's not enough mm -hmm. to build proof. Like you, you, I love that quote. It's like build undeniable proof. Yes, but you have to drive. It's like drive the beliefs with your actions. So mm -hmm. it's like if I, I, I like the idea of being who you want to be before you you are that person. It's like exactly. I'm a successful person. So what would a successful person in this situation do? Yes. But it's like once you've passed that hurdle, you then have to go like I've done this. Yeah. I'm capable of believing myself. Yeah. It's like it's okay for you to go. Okay, well I've I've built a pretty good business. I've like I've got a, a stack of evidence that i can do this maybe i should kind of start ignoring that voice in my head that's telling my telling me i can't do this yes i, I think like it's it, but like your actions have to drive your beliefs but then your beliefs have to follow yeah um i think is a good way to good way to handle that by the way i have to address the big elephant in the room 
I'm sorry, dude. I stole your videographer. <laughs> <laughs> Martin. Yeah, Martin's great. Man, Martin's it's really good. just funny as that. Yeah, small you know, world. Yeah, I hired him for a job a few months back. And he just happens to be the videographer. That lives in this building. <laughs> and, yeah. and he lives in the same building. What are the freaking odds? I yeah, could not believe even, it. We yeah. didn't even plan for that. It was yeah. just like, yeah, I reached out on Instagram and I wanted to work with someone. And and yeah, it's been amazing, to be honest. It's yeah. been one of the best decisions I ever made. And it came back to the thing. It's like, I was really nervous before I did that. And I just decided, I was like, what's the worst that happens here? I try them for two months. I spend $6,000 and then I never see that money again. Mm. The best case scenario, which is what happened, is it was great and it led to me finding more people to work with yeah. and outs outsourcing even more and having like, we're now working on projects together that are amazing and all these opportunities wouldn't have happened if it didn't start from making that decision and going with, yeah. I guess, like a, a something I was super nervous about. I have to tell you something also that he said, don't tell him, please don't tell him. I'm like, no, no, I have to tell Here him. <laughs> He's like, so you guys met through Instagram, right? Yeah. And he said, one day, I just realized he posted a story of a, a gym <laughs> or something in the building. I'm like, holy shit, it lives he lives in my in building. My building. <laughs> <laughs> and he just sent you a random DM like saying like, hey, like if you want something, he didn't mention at all. That's like, the so funny. And he's like, I never mentioned to him that yeah. we were living in the same place. Yeah. But then one day he said like- It's when we met up for, we went up, like I was like, let's catch up for coffee to make sure we can actually get along. Yeah. And then, yeah, it did he was like oh we live in the same building <laughs> yeah, so, yeah it's so funny. he said man after that i realized that i could see him so every time he parks he sees you there he's yeah. like and i'm like what do you mean you see him uh, you will see and we yeah. got to hear we yeah. saw you here yeah. i'm like oh so that's what you mean on yeah. the window thing yeah yeah no, it's funny <laughs> i thought that was hilarious very, it's yeah. very funny no he's great he's yeah. awesome and like building a team has been the best decision i've that's ever made that's exactly what i want to get you to yeah, yeah. i think like get people who are better at doing the thing that you're going to do and do that. And then also like it's for me, it's it's just been a realization that it's like, what am I, where am I most effective? Like I think a lot of, I guess, creatives in general is like I have no ego when it comes to my posts on Instagram. I don't give a shit. Like I've been doing this for so long where it's like I don't care who makes it. I don't care how it looks. I care about the messaging behind what I'm sharing. That's like the primary thing. And it's like, okay, well, with that in mind, where am I most effective? Well, I'm definitely not effective cutting videos. Yeah. I'm definitely not effective adding, adding titles to videos. I'm not effective editing. I'm not yeah. effective like managing that side of my business. So it's like, okay, well, let's hire someone to do that. Yeah. And it's like the same thing. It's like for me with working with Martin, it was just a case of like, how can I expand my capabilities? How can I do more? How can I present more of my life, I guess? And it was just like, okay, well, if I had a videographer, that opens up the door to doing all kinds of things. Like, And that's essentially been the gateway drug into me being able to now like, share my passions that mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't have been able to share if I didn't have Martin to help me share yeah. them. Like yeah. a lot of my training, a lot of the endurance stuff, like working with Sony now, it's like all of this yeah. happened as a result of doing that. Yeah. Um, obviously like it takes a while to build to that point but I want people to know it's like I definitely wasn't in as much you're never going to be in the financial position you think you should be before you do it mm. like I now spend like close to like six or seven grand a month on like my two full time I guess like my two employees mm. I guess like they're contractors mm. but it's like I now spend that and I was not in the position to do that when I first did it. Mm. And it's like, I'm still in a position where it's like, obviously it's like after everything is said and done on paper, it's like, okay, this works. But every month it makes me nervous. Every month it's like, mm. is this something I'll continue yeah, to do? Yeah. And I think that's one, my mindset towards money. I'm always petrified of zero. Like mm. that's something I will be forever scared of, even though it's like, like the chance of me hitting zero is like, mm. I have a higher chance of, getting to whatever then i have hitting zero yeah. but it's like and i know that but in my mind it's like it's always a fear so i'm very i guess uh reserved in my approach to i guess spending money so uh, you're never going to be in the position you think you should be before you outsource oh, yeah. that sort of stuff i am encouraging of content creators as soon as possible yeah i, I i've experienced something very similar with my video editor and yeah. my second shooter and all this stuff like 
it I was very scared. I'll yeah. tell you that. Like to make the decision because I'm like, this is gonna cost me money. Yeah. How am I gonna handle like the the standards that I have with with the stuff that we're doing? Yeah. How do we get him up to speed? Because like obviously there was a big gap as well. In, oh, that's in, always in, gonna happen. You know, so yeah, yeah. It, it, there was a lot of stuff, and obviously the money is a big thing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I gonna spend all this money? And is he gonna do good work? Am I gonna be you know stuff? Best fucking decision mm. I have done. Because yeah. you need to start building a team as soon as you can. Well, where are you most yeah. effective? Yeah. Like yeah. You, you get you're your just time not effective. Yeah. yeah. And then also it's like, it's not a trade. Like you're not, you're not doubling your output. You're 10 timing, times in yeah. your output. It's yeah. like for me having an editor who edits seven videos a week for me, it's like at the bare minimum, if I do nothing except film one day per week, I'll have seven videos going out per yeah. week. And it's like the compounding effect over months of that is huge. And then all the time that I get back, it's like four days of my week are completely free to do more stuff on my business. Yeah. Whereas before it was like, I have to focus on getting content out. So it's like, now that's handled. It's like one, what's the what's the net gain of having content going out every day for the next 12 months, no matter what. Yeah. And two, what's the net gain of having four days per week that are now mine to reinvest back into more time in my business? What to can work I do? on the business yeah. and in the business. Exactly. Yeah. And then it's like, again, it's like, what would happen if I hired a team to manage the cohorts and manage these mm. workshops and stuff like that? Yeah. Then that time's again invested into something else. And then it's again and again and again. And I think I think like I, I'm very attracted to, I've thought a lot about this recently, I think, because it's like now it's at the point where it's like, I think... I, there's like one of two paths it's like i really like the idea of the solopreneur path i yeah. like i like that because it's it is a freedom that you kind of lose once things get a bit too hectic yeah. like once you've got a team once you are a manager and no longer i guess a creative it's yeah. like you then become that becomes your full-time thing yeah. and then also like like the bigger the ship the harder it is to turn the harder it yeah. is to manage the more upkeep is required to yeah. keep it moving yeah. it's like for me still it's like if i wanted to i could get rid of working with everyone yeah. if something were to happen or i could just scale it back to the point where it's like okay we're just going to focus on what we're doing right now yeah. content we're just going to coast we're going to keep going yeah. i'm going to build up a yeah. body of savings get yeah. into property and then we're fine so i think like yeah, I, I'm very attracted to the idea of like a solopreneur. So I'm like very cautious to be like, okay, well, I don't want to just go crazy hiring out as many positions as yeah. humanly possible because uh, I don't want to just turn into someone who's managing people. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I have a question for that because I think there's a lot of people that could be listening to this uh, mm. at the stage of, okay, I'm, I'm ready to start maybe hiring someone. We, you just mentioned you found Martin to yeah. Instagram and it just happens that he lives here. But how are you finding the other people like the editors everything it's very like circumstantial so up until this point like my editor i found through another creative so i just reached out and i was like who's doing your stuff like i really like your content and mm. he was like this person reach out and i reached out to him and now i work with him uh the animator that i've done a few projects with now is like i he made a video completely of his own accord and like a great example if you want to start working with the creators yeah. just make something he made it, posted it, didn't even tell me, like didn't DM me or anything. And then I reached out to him. I was like, can you do this paid? Like, Do you want to do this recurring? And then Martin was a different, like, it's hard for me to say that because it's like, I don't know how much of your audience is more the like content creator and less of like the, I guess, production owner, yeah. production company owner. But it's like, yeah, it's pretty easy for me to just post on my story and be like, are there any videographers in Melbourne mm -hmm. uh, capable of working? Uh, but um. I think it's very circumstantial. I guess pay attention to what other people in your space are doing. Um, if you want someone full time, that's a whole other ball game. That's a whole other ball game. You're probably gonna have to look into actually hiring uh, through something like Seek, through mm. I guess someone in a position to go full time. Mm. But for contractors, if you're just looking for an editor, if you're looking for a uh, assistant, if you're looking for whatever, I, that's it's just pay attention to what is. What are your peers doing? What are people slightly above you doing? Who are they working with? Do they have friends that can work mm. with you? It's like, again, it comes back to that networking thing. It's like, you'll, I guess, like there's always going to be people in your network that you can speak to that yeah. have the answers for you. Um, so yeah, it was all very circumstantial.
all very circumstantial. What advice would you give to someone that is maybe looking to work with someone like you? What could they do to get in touch? Because you could post a story yeah. right now and you will get a bunch of people trying yeah, to work yeah, with yeah. you. But how do you filter the right person for it? And if yeah. the right person thinks like, oh, I will be a great fit for that. How, could, how can they build their relationship or even get their foot in the door? What, what would, advice would you give to someone like that? It's it's a hard one because like yeah, try to gauge whether they need it. Mm -hmm. I have ironically since I hired an editor, my emails I get every day from people offering editing has like yeah. skyrocketed. It's like <laughs> reach out to someone who like clearly yeah, doesn't yeah. does it themselves or whatever. But it's like gauge interest and then understand that offering your services for free comes at a cost for that person it's yes. like if i was to hire an editor for free and they were like i'll do a month for free it's like well what happens at the end of that month i'm gonna have to negotiate with you about a price eventually yeah. i've got to figure out how i'm going to get you footage i've got to organize all that time i've got to liaise with you i've got to come back and forth with edits i've got to spend time investing yeah. into your education so yeah. you can create content yeah. on my page yeah. it's like i know i'm like I know how much traffic I'm driving to yeah. my editor's business. I know how many people who come to me and they're like, who edits yeah. your stuff? And I send them to him. Yeah. So it's like, I know that. So how are you like, you can't just go, I'll work for you for free. Yeah. I think the best thing you could do is like understand what they need, like deeply yeah. try to understand what they need. Like a good one, like a good example would be like, you know, is there a creator? Is there a creator, you know, who's maybe doing Instagram and trying to do YouTube? maybe on the side doesn't really have the time for it and you could come in and go okay i'm going to help you edit all of your youtube content and that's going to be something that i'll take care of 100 percent for you so all you have to do is shoot and you know that they need that because they're struggling to do youtube whilst they're managing their instagram yeah. or vice versa it's like do you know any youtubers who really want to do tiktok and instagram yeah. reels and you could just cut down their youtube videos for them without them having to do any extra work yeah. and then take that burden from them and have yeah. content that they can do um, so there's ways that you can kind of guess, I guess, make yourself useful. And it comes down to, it's going to be more than just sending cold emails to a bunch of creators. It's going to be about figuring out who actually needs the work, yeah. what they need specifically, and then offering that in a way that works with their situation. Yeah. Um, so don't like, don't go to a creator with 80,000 followers and go, can I work full time for you? Because they probably don't have the budget for it. Yeah. But to also don't go to like, like i don't know like just it's very circumstantial like yeah. i said it's like try to figure out what they actually need before you throw yeah, yourself and, the, in and the deep i end. think that's it like figure out the needs figure out the the holes yeah. that you can feel for them yeah exactly that's it because it, 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 it and like you said yeah. very important people think like oh i will just do it for free man me just yeah. even getting this conversation going yeah, yeah, is costing yeah. me time and yeah, guess what yeah, my yeah. hour is pretty expensive you know yeah. so like I, i'm i can't yeah. be doing this with you if i'm gonna put my energy into even figure out if we're a, a good fit yeah <laughs> you need to come up with good value yeah. up front yeah or most is massive on that yeah and it's, and it's a numbers game as well like you've kind of just got to understand if if someone had to come to me three months ago offering editing services like carl does for me now perfect timing you wouldn't have had to do anything you would have just have to show me your work edit a couple raw clips for me for free Boom. you've got a job yeah right now if you reach out it's i'll probably won't even answer yeah. the email but yeah. that's just because i don't need it and it's, it's the like timing yes yeah, it's, it's, it's the wrong timing it's a numbers game it's like if you send to 10 people six of those people probably are just going to be the complete wrong time it's not going to work it's not your fault it's just circumstantial mm -hmm. two of those people are probably going to need it but can't afford it and then two of those people will need it might not see the email so it's like out of 10, you get two possibilities. Yeah. And then those people have to decide that they yeah. want to work with you. Yeah. So it's like, just take, like figure out how many emails you have to send to get a yes or a maybe, and then send however many emails you need to get to get enough yeses or maybes to the point mm. where you can work with someone you like. Don't go, I want to work with him or her and go, I'm only going to do this until I can work with them. Yeah. It's like, there's nothing wrong with you wanting to work with them. It doesn't work out, work with them and then build to yeah. the point where you can offer something to them that's useful. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's like a numbers game and very circumstantial. Yeah, timing, man. Timing is massive. Like being yeah. at the right time at the right place and spotting yeah. th that is the correct timing to yeah. do so and taking obviously the chance on it. But yeah, that's 
Yeah, that, that, it just comes, even this podcast, man, that, like this thing, I was just explaining to these two yeah. um, um, when we were downstairs, even and there's two things that, that in there. One of those was Martin tells uh, my producer, Alex, he's like, because uh, I was telling him, man, make sure you get the BTS, all this stuff. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It, Tom is a very important guest. <laughs> we're making a lot of shit happen to this podcast where, you know, on their yeah. no much sleep, we still need to get home and get a bunch yeah. of stuff done for tomorrow. So it's very important we get this right. There cannot be any mistakes. And Martin goes and he's like, oh man, aren't you putting too much pressure on Alex? And I look at him like, dude, we perform under pressure. Yeah. I'm the guy that when he scores, when you need him to score, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. not going to give you a hug when shit hits the fan. Yeah. He's going to solve the problem. Yeah. I need everyone on the team to get on board with that, that yeah. you perform at a high pressure level. That's mm. the biggest lesson I've learned from martial arts that mm. you don't get to not perform when someone is punching you in the face. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to be on point when, yeah. so, when the fire is on. Yeah. You need to make more content about your martial arts stuff. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, yeah, I think like, like it's the same with Guillaume. Like he needs to make more CrossFit content. Shout out to brother Guillaume yeah, as well. Like yeah, it needs to happen because it's like, I had to, like a side point, but like I think the more you can stack your interests, the more you're gonna stand mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. It's like if you're just a videographer guy. It's like you're the videographer who wears a hat who also did jujitsu. It's jujitsu, right? That you do? Uh jujitsu mainly MMA. Yeah. As yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's like that makes you interesting. Mm. It makes you stand out. Mm. It makes you compelling. It makes you relatable. Mm. It's like that's important. And I think like the again to be the team thing, it's like I'm sure Martin said it's like working with me is pretty laid back. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm very easy to work yeah. with. Like I will I will want things to happen when stuff needs to be done, mm. but I'm not a very like I'm just not like it, where I would say we're two like very different characters mm -hmm. in our like demeanor and mm -hmm. approach to things. There's nothing wrong with that, mm -hmm. but it's about finding people who are appropriate for that sort of yeah. thing. So it's like Martin sitting there, Martin and I work really, really well because we're both very chill, mm -hmm. but it's like you two, you probably crush it in that situation because you're both in that energy, like the energy you guys brought into making sure all of this was mm -hmm. set up. It's like, oh my God, I, this is not what I would do if this was my podcast. <laughs> I'd probably have this shit jerry-rigged. Yeah. Like, one of these cameras would be on a box rather than a tripod. It's like, yeah. So it's like, I think it's understanding, yeah, it's understanding the people that you're working with and then also finding an environment that's right mm -hmm, for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and, and for me personally, I've found that you have to raise your standards. Since like I've raised my standards on everything in life because I don't want to live mm -hmm. an average life. You know, So to me, it's like, whatever i say i'm gonna do that's how that's a big thing as well mm. that, I, that like i'm very careful with my words mm. i don't say i'm gonna do something unless i actually mean it because mm. once i say it's like project 84 yeah that's what when guillaume brought it you yeah. know that which if you don't know by the way tom came up with this challenge on, yeah. on social media of saying like you know most people won't commit and that's why they don't succeed yeah. i guarantee you if, if you commit for six weeks to post two times a day you'll find some sort of success yeah and in, even if you don't, you build the discipline of just getting out there. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. yeah. So even then, when Guillaume brought that to me, he's like, okay, are we doing this? I'm like, fuck me. You know, let me think. Because once I say it, I'm doing it, yeah, I'm yeah, doing yeah. it. There's no option, you yeah. know. So it's a, I, I think like raising your standards is that it's a important thing in general. Like yeah. just to be like it, the podcast you know if yeah. we're gonna do this we're gonna do it at the highest level we need to you're giving us your time right yeah, and yeah, your time yeah. is very expensive yeah we're not gonna treat you like <laughs> you know yeah. like oh it's just tom whatever yeah. just bring one camera i'm gonna do this shit at the house i'm bringing someone you know i'm paying yeah, someone yeah. to do this shit you yeah. know like it's that and that goes to everything if i do my martial arts i'm gonna commit i'm gonna learn this thing yeah. if i do my video business you know i'm gonna commit that, that's why I'm very careful with the people I talk to as well. You know, I'm, I wouldn't be here unless I knew like, yeah, you're a high level individual that, you know, I just want to give a platform to people to learn from you. Yeah. You know, so we, we wouldn't be even take yeah, the exactly. time to do it unless, you know, exactly. The, the, yeah, exactly. If, is it worth it? And the other thing I wanted to say about that, just for people to understand, like, man, you can't be a walking accident. He mm. thinks like we were saying before, things don't happen by accident. This podcast is not accident. Mm. Like this took a build up, yeah. you know, and it was okay, joining the the workshop that mm. you were doing, time to build, which by the way, incredible. You should definitely do it. Like it, everything this man is doing, highly, highly recommend you take a look. We're gonna talk about what he's doing in a second. But you know, 
we did that. So now you know who it is. You know, I'm friends with Guillaume. So yeah. you, there's a little connection in there. Yeah. You know, sending DMs, joining the Project 84, doing yeah. some reels where I'm tagging you so you know I'm in the loop kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Just happens that we have a project in Melbourne. Guess what? I'm letting him know <laughs> a month ago because I know he's busy. But yeah. hey, yeah. this is happening in a month. Yeah. You know, this is no accident. This is no accident. Yeah. Shit could not work out. Maybe you were to be so. Maybe our schedule was impossible to work with. Yeah. But it's no accident. Yeah. And you know, I did everything in my power to, to make, make it, it work. work. And I didn't know it was going to happen until, what, this morning, I think it was? Yeah, yeah probably like uh, this a. morning. <laughs> yeah, literally. This morning is when I finally got full confirmation that this was yeah. going to happen. Yeah. So I was prepared for it, not it to happen. Yeah. But it's not an accident. Yeah. That, and that's my point. If you want something, man, whatever it is, if it's a podcast with uh, an, an individual that you really want to connect with, a client that you really want to get, uh, you know, a full-time job that you want to pursue, mm. man, do everything in your power. Most people don't do everything in their power to make shit happen. That's yeah. why they don't happen. And then they yeah. blame life, God, destiny, whatever <laughs> it is, you know, they, I, I have no excuses. I do everything in my power. And if you were to tell me, Today, like, hey, dude, impossible. We're coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least I have the peace of mind. No, I did, did everything. everything I could. I call him. I send him messages. I yeah. use uh, pull connections. <laughs> I, I stole his videographer. I did everything yeah. I could to be sitting right now in front of him. Yeah, so, it's man, respectable. Yeah, yeah, it's respectable. No, the the I I like, and I would be very curious to ask, and I don't want it like the obviously the, the tangent to go on, but I'd be very curious to ask because I obviously have my opinions on like mm. the link between my injury. I think like martial arts and endurance sport are very similar because it's like a i guess it's 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 a fight like the whole time i think like i've done other different types of like disciplines in the fitness world and it's like nothing really compares to endurance sport i don't have i don't have any experience in martial arts but from what the way that people speak about it it sounds very similar to endurance sport and i'd be very like curious to hear what you think the like how does how does your experience in martial arts impact your like approach to business and approach to everything you do? I'm sure it impacts you a lot. Massively, massively, yeah. man. I think uh, I tell people one of the biggest things I've done for myself is getting into martial arts. Because mm. every time you show up to a gym, first, even getting into a gym of a martial arts gym is a very different experience to go to a standard gym, yeah. to go to a, a swimming class, a dancing mm. class, whatever. Because guess what? You're going to be fucking scared because you're going to step into a place where anyone could kill you in seconds. <laughs> and and people don't understand yeah. the level of that until you experience it. I'm sure like, as especially as dudes, testosterone and all this stuff, You and, and maybe if you train, if you're a little bit built, whatever, yeah. you think like, oh, if that dude were to, you know, yeah, come yeah, take yeah, my yeah. girlfriend, I will smash him. If he's to re- disrespect him, obviously. Yeah. No, you wouldn't. No, you <laughs> Especially wouldn't. Especially now with how many people do jujitsu and all that sort of stuff. And that's like, the other thing. It's become so there. popular, <laughs> that's so accessible, that guess what? There's more fighters, there's more people that know one one or two things. Yeah. And you don't need that much like extra knowledge. If you know how to throw a one, two, yeah. you know, and, and a good hook and whatever and dodge a punch, <laughs> you're going to be anil- annihilated. Yeah. You know, and yeah. if you get in so- someone that knows jujitsu, mm. Brother, you are it's in over. for a ride. As long as, <laughs> as soon as they will take you down in seconds, and you will know what actually is hell. Yeah, so to yeah. me, when I go fighting, and guess what? I'm I'm not that big. So most people in my gym are usually the people I train with are usually stronger, are usually bigger, mm. are usually more athletic, maybe. Mm. So it, man, just taking that, like knowing every time I go to the gym and I get to a session and, you know, someone smash me. Sometimes people mop the floor with me. <laughs> Sometimes I do okay. Yeah. Sometimes I, like, I've been doing this already for over two years now. So mm. obviously I got to a place where I know something about it. But the lessons I have learned from people, like that's why I perform in whatever I do in, in mm. life. Because if I can get through someone that was trying to choke me out mm. in the morning, anything else in the day just becomes easier yeah. you know like yeah money whatever i just you know i could have died there yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. I, I, it's I, the I, same it's the same thing it's yeah. exactly the same thing i say like yeah it's pretty hard to be it's pretty pretty hard to be grumpy about anything if you start your week with a 20 kilometer run exactly. it's like if i wake up monday morning and go for a 20k it's pretty hard to be grumpy about anything else because exactly. it's like and i think like purposely putting putting 
purposely putting yourself through the most difficult thing you do because yeah. i love that saying it's like the most difficult thing you do is the most difficult thing you do yeah. it's like the hardest thing you've ever done is the hardest thing you've yeah. ever done it's like for some people that hard might be growing up in a third world country and escaping war zones yeah. and then being a refugee and yeah. being an outcast from your community yeah. you know it's like that's a hard thing to go through yeah. Another person's hard might be getting to work in the morning and dealing yeah. with traffic. Yeah, the level of hardness is yeah. different for everyone. Yeah, but subjectively, those are exactly the same. Mm. So it's like you, that hard and this hard are exactly the same for those two people. Yeah. And I think a lot of people could benefit a lot from knowing that the hardest thing that I do each day is the hardest thing that I do each day. So how can I purposely make that more difficult? It's like push yourself physically. Put yourself yeah. into situations like jujitsu yeah. or like martial arts or like endurance running or yeah. whatever. Put yourself in a position where it's like I have to, like the hardest thing I do today is something I did to myself. Yeah, that's so powerful for the yeah, rest of your life. Yeah. I I completely agree with that. And and yeah, like whether it's you know martial arts, endurance training, find something that really challenges you. You mm. know that makes you. The, and goes back again to think for yourself you know mm. i bet you when you're in in those runs all the demons in your head start creeping in all the people uh, all the, the pretty thought, hard to, you know? yeah it's pretty hard to not it's pretty hard when you're running you know eight to nine hours a week it's yeah. pretty hard to not spend a lot of time speaking to yourself exactly yeah I'm, and, and guess what i'm fighting man and sometimes when you get completely gassed or maybe you emptied the gas too quickly, you didn't manage your adrenaline, you had an adrenaline bump, or someone is just at a whole different mm, league and it's just mm. fucking whooping your ass. Man, the voice in your head starts going like, what the fuck am I doing here? You know, this, yeah, I'm just yeah, taking yeah. a beating right here. That, you know, like, why am I doing this? Yeah, why, why the fuck am That's I doing this? That's a good feeling. Here? Yeah, yeah. And it's a good it, feeling yeah. to put yourself through because learning that you... You almost have to have a... I heard this recently. It's like you almost have to have an alter ego that's stronger and more capable than you are. Yeah. And having that throughout life is powerful because it's like I've always felt that my... The person that I become when I'm training is a different person than the person I am most of the yeah. day. Yeah. And it's like that doesn't... That, I'm not saying that in the sense of like it's like a more aggressive or macho yeah. version. It's like, no, it's like it is literally someone that I lean on who I believe is more yeah. capable than I am. Yeah. So it's like, it's almost like that superhero suit. Yeah, it's like throwing yeah. a superhero suit on and being more powerful than you actually are. Because yeah. then you get to, uh, the reason why that's important is like when you put yourself in physical situations where it's difficult, yeah. it's like getting choked out on a yeah. jiu-jitsu mat or running a long run. It's yeah. like, not only do you have to ignore your body, but you also have to ignore your mind. Yeah. It's like, how do you ignore your mind? There has to be another version of you that you can go to to go like, okay, I'm capable of this. Yeah. And I know that version's capable. I can lean on that person to get me through this. And if you have that as like an asset, like a yeah. weapon that you can yeah. call upon for the rest of your life, it's yeah. like everything becomes easier. Easy. Managing any situation becomes easier yeah. because you know you're capable of so much in that yeah. arena i think like yeah the best thing that i've ever done is kind of always taken that as a always made that a massive priority in my life yeah like still to this day it's like my training at the moment is building up because i'm training for a race and it's like i'm committing time each day that i don't have <laughs> yeah to to go for a yeah. run for an hour and a yeah. half or two hours or whatever it's like yeah. That's time I don't have, and I've made it a priority in my life because I know it benefits me. You, you have to, you have to. I, yeah. and, and here's the thing: I don't even understand people when they say I don't have for time for training. No, you do have no, you time. Don't. You just you, don't make yeah, you time for it. Yeah, because guess what? I'm busy as fuck. <laughs> like every day, man. Every day. That, that's why I tell my girlfriend: man, the, when it hits like six ish p.m., the one thing I want in my life is peace. Because I've been at war all fucking day since 5 a.m. And guess what? Tomorrow is going to be the same. Yeah. You know, like, I'm, and I'm fighting, like you said, it's the mental demons. Yeah. I never, I'm not a morning person. And yeah. I've been doing this for years now, you know, but yeah. I guess what? That alarm goes off and I get get to work because yeah. I know that I, I have to do things. And yeah. these things are important. You may think that your life is not important. You may think that your actions have no repercussions. I guarantee you, it doesn't matter where you are in life, your life is important and what you do has importance in the world. Mm. Little things, man. You could be just going to the grocery shop and you open the door for someone that was hurting because someone is about to die and he made it the second before he died just because you opened that door. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Like that just goes to show the connections that we have, you know? Yeah, yeah. 
yeah you have to yeah you have to i guess walk through life thinking that you have a bigger impact than you do yeah yeah it's important yeah it's very important um i'm curious to know um what are the three biggest lessons you could give to young tom <laughs> young young tom what would you tell him the three to, biggest lessons you know be, be make his life i guess not only easier but like to help him get to where you are faster ah uh, i mean i think like the the classic one is just like trust the process like i think like for it took me a long time to stop being impatient i think like i wanted things to happen faster than they do i still want things to happen faster than they do like i'm sort of always i guess pushing for the next thing and i think it's important to understand like i the trust that i and this is like just a case of having more experience the trust i have in my own ability now gives me the freedom to go okay i can slow down and i can save a moment and i can sort of approach things with a mentality of i don't need everything to happen all at once mm -hmm. the other thing as well is like the constant thing of like spend as much time finding the thing as you do on the thing so it's like invest your energy into continuing to find the thing that makes you happier than what you're doing now it's like you have to like if you if there's like i can't express this enough and i say this because i everything that i say is like just giving advice to my old old version of me so everything i say i'm passionately explaining it because i know i know what i was thinking at that yeah. time and it's like one of the things is like if there's any shred of doubt that you're on the wrong path you're on the wrong path mm. and it's like anything if there's any discomfort if there's anything you don't like if there's any struggle that you're like for example when i was freelancing as a filmmaker it's like i felt like i was wasted Like I felt like it was like, I felt like my, I felt like I wasn't respected. I felt like the clients that I work with were kind of just like bringing me in because it was like, well, he's cheaper than such and such. And he's also works like a little bit better than yeah. whatever. But it's like, I was under no illusion that there were 20 other people that I was competing with every single time I went for a job. And every single time I got turned down was because I was cheaper than someone or more expensive than someone that was better. It's like, I always felt like I wasn't, I wasn't respected as much as I wanted to. So I was like, okay, this isn't enough. It's like, it made me happy and it made me fulfilled that I was doing my own work and I was running my own business, but it wasn't enough. And it's very easy for people to get to a point where it's like, okay, I'm comfortable here. It's like, no, keep looking, keep looking because what is better is out there. And for me, it's like that advice is huge because it took me a long time to go. Like I've had a lot of, I've had it like a lot of moments. It's like, it's like a... I've had a lot of moments where good things have happened and then they've slowed down and I thought I was never going to get over that hump again. Mm. It's like, I'm never going to reach that high again. It's like, no, it always is. It's like, there's always a bigger high. You just have to keep searching for that next thing. Yeah. It's like, if I got to, I got to like 60 or 70,000 followers from digital art mm. and it's like the balls it took to go, fuck that, I want more. So I'm going to get, like, I'm going to neglect and turn my back on everything that I've done up until this point yeah. to get me here, to get me to the next place. Yeah. It's like, I did that because I knew that that wasn't perfect. Yeah. I knew that wasn't the place I needed to be in. So it's like, continue to search for it, continue to invest your time in finding the next thing. And then I think the third thing is like, just prioritize your enjoyment. Like, really prioritize your enjoyment. Like, Do the things that you enjoy to do. And if like the, the classic thing that everyone says that it's a little bit of a trope if you don't understand it, but if you do get to the point where you understand it, you understand how important it is. If it's not a fuck yes, it's a no in every situation. If you get asked to do something and you don't really want to do it, you have to say no. It's like, that's so, so important because for years it was like, It took me almost, like I said, it's like, it took me being 15 grand in credit card debt considering getting a job last year yeah. to get to where i am now because i said no to everything else that could have kept me coasting yeah. it was like it took me neglecting freelance jobs and going i don't know if this is going to work for me to then have the time and the energy to invest into growing something bigger yeah. i think you have to and the only reason i did that is because i was like i don't really enjoy freelancing i really enjoy creating content online yeah. and being a personal brand and having yeah. that i guess mission that i get to help people So it's like prioritize your enjoyment, like do things that make you happy. Like it's, it's, it's like a fine line you have to tread, but I think it's worth hunting for. Mm -hmm. Like it's, 
it is a fine line you have to tread between like your enjoyment that you find in something and then also something that makes you money. But I think you can get pretty close to something that makes you really happy and also makes you money. You just have to keep searching for it. Um, so I think like the, those are probably the three things that I would say. But there's so many more and there's so many other lessons. Like There's so many situations that I've, I guess, so many things that I've done over the last few years where I'm like, that was... Yeah, like life changing experience. Yeah. So, uh, like, there's, uh, like, I guess the general thing is like the the one thing would be like trust your gut, trust the process. Like, yeah. don't stress. Like, it'll be all right. Like, you'll figure it out. Like, it's not a big deal. What's the worst advice you have ever received? The worst advice I've ever received. Ah, uh, I don't know. I think that's that classic thing of like the worst thing is like. Like the worst advice would be like something like be realistic. Like there's that classic one, but no one's ever told me to be realistic. I think it's like, I don't know. I've always been in every time, every time I've done something at the start, there's always been people in my life that have called it like a phase or called it like something that's not going to turn into anything. There's always been people that doubt what I do. In every situation, there was people who doubted what I started doing like last year, even though it's like I've built... Yeah. all this evidence that you shouldn't doubt me it's like people still doubt what you're doing people still question and go oh i don't know if this is suitable for what you're doing there's yeah. always going to be those people and <laughs> no, i think like funny. if 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 there was something along those lines of yeah like maybe this won't work out it's like well, why why not why not i'll figure it out <laughs> i have before i'll do it again <laughs> so yeah i would say something along those lines but yeah like the be realistic one is is obvious because like no one's ever said be realistic literally but i think i like the idea of being unrealistic yes because it's like what's the point what's the like like we're only here for a finite amount of time why not why not at least set a goal that excites you and you might not get there like you probably won't but it's like you're going to get a hell of a lot further if it's a goal that fires you up it's like i get up every morning and i want to do what i do like why am I making thirty to forty thousand dollars a month? Why? Because I want to get to a hundred, and it's like once I get to a hundred, I want to get to a couple hundred, and it's like a couple million a month. It's like why? Because I'm ambitious and I have massive goals. It's like if you have realistic goals, I would probably have stopped at ten. Like ten's yeah. enough. Like twenty's enough. Thirties is ridiculous, and it's like now it's just getting fucking crazy. Yeah. But it's like why? Because I want to. And I've set goals that are, uh, I guess, audacious enough to excite me enough to do things that take me beyond what is realistic, mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah, and I, and I don't think anyone that has ever accomplished anything great in this life had realistic goals. Had realistic goals. Yeah, That's of course not. not. A chance. If you, any, anyone that you respect, admire, or think like is an extraordinary human being, I guarantee you he was not thinking about realistic goals. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Of course not. What's no. the best advice you have ever received? Uh, the best advice I've ever received. That's a hard question. Um, something, the first thing that comes to mind is like, like perfect, like become really, really good at a specific thing. Like become, become like, become undeniable at like one thing. Like, I think, like, I really like that idea. And, and the, the advice was, it was like an art teacher. And it was like, do the same thing over and over again. Don't change it. Like, and literally draw the same thing. I think I made a video recently about it. But it was like, it was like, rather than trying to be a musician and a painter and a drawer and a portrait artist and a photographer and a filmmaker, it's like, just become like undeniable at one thing. And it's like, right now I could be, doing a little bit of freelance video i could be doing a podcast i could be doing a youtube channel i could be doing whatever it's like no i want to be undeniable in one thing yeah. focus and it's like that might then turn into something else so it's like that's probably what i would say is the first thing that comes to mind but there's so many yeah. like there's so many like instances where i've had mentors that have helped me out i think like the i guess like fuck i don't know there's so many I would need to like have a really good think about that question. <laughs> Can you talk about uh, what you're doing right now? Mm. Uh, the cohort two time to build. 
I think like I just it's it's just me it's just my way of teaching everything I know. Like I'm very passionate about my mission, I guess, is to help people do what I've done. I feel a massive privilege for the position that I'm in. Like yeah. I'm not extraordinary like i'm not at all like i'm a very normal dude like i have uh, you actually are <laughs> I, I literally introduced you as an extraordinary individual yeah uh, but i'm, podcast, so I'm yeah, a normal i'm a, just a normal dude like i have like my own insecurities i have my own doubts i have like very normal shit like I, i'm just a really normal guy who decided to do something different mm-hmm. and it's like i've been able to achieve the things that i've done not as a result of crazy talent i'm way less talented than a lot of people same the one thing that i am is like i'm just i don't fuck off like i've been doing this for years and it's like i just have not stopped and i think i see that as evidence that other people can do it Mm. like i know that other people can do what i do so it's like i feel such a desperation to teach like give this to as many people as possible Mm. because i know that i could if I was to give the, the knowledge that I know now to myself five years ago, I'd get here in half the time or maybe even like a year as opposed to six years. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, why can't I do that for other people? So I've just like made it my mission to, I guess, help as many people as I can because I do feel like a, I do feel like a, I, f- I feel such a privilege for the success that I've found. Like, I feel like it's like, this is, I, I it's my responsibility to help other people do the same because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. i just don't see what i've done as that crazy like i don't even see what i've done as that lucky like a lot of people talk about luck in this space mm-hmm. a lot of people talk about whatever but it's like yeah you get lucky a little bit but it's like you do need to you you create the actions that give yourself the opportunity to have luck yes and i think like That's i just it. i just feel such a responsibility for that and this is just another way of me offering that to people um so i I guess the nitty-gritty of it is like it teaches people to build a personal brand um and then monetize their personal brands so it's very niche like it's like i'm not going to teach you how to make videos i'm not going to teach you how to like post on social media i'm going to teach you how to build your brand build your mission build your target demographic and then sell to that people sell to those people I'm not even going to teach you like affiliates and brand deals and all that sort of stuff. I'm just teaching you how to sell your own stuff to your target audience as a personal brand Um, because that's exactly what I've done. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Where can people check that out? So, Time to Build, uh, the website still doesn't have its own custom domain because I... Time to build is a very expensive domain, funnily enough. Oh, yeah? Yeah, time and build are two like keywords that are very expensive. So it's like a $20,000 domain. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm sure you'll get that. I'm sure you'll get it. <laughs> might have to invest in it at some point. But yeah, yeah. I don't, don't have the custom domain. So it's just linked in my bio. So yeah. Tom Noski on yeah. all, oh. all social medias, I think. Is, it, yeah. is there anything that you think will be important that you want to tell right now to creative entrepreneurs that might be listening to it? fuck it like why not why not try something bigger why not try the next thing why not try it all there's a lot of people sitting on the fence with this sort of stuff it's like why not like i think like it's a lot less like it's a lot less than you think it's going to be like there's not as many people care about like i've got like two hundred and thirty thousand followers on instagram or something like that a lot less people actually care about what i do than people from the outside looking in probably think and it's like i think you have to go into it with the perspective of like whatever i'm worried about is probably not going to happen so if you're worried about what people will think of you fuck them if you're worried about your friends and family judging you they will but who cares it's like fuck it why not Mm -hmm. go for it if the dream is big enough it's worth trying yes so go for it yeah, and think of the upside, not not so much of what could go wrong. Well, think of the yeah. downside as yeah. well. It's like, yeah. what's the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario of someone trying to build a social media following is it doesn't work, and then they just go back to their oh, job. Oh yeah, the risk the in, risk in, is in, go- in this no specific risk. area is literally is close to zero. Yeah, like, there's like, no well, risk. Yeah, like, yeah, there's literally it. no risk. Yeah. Whereas people, I think, build up this fear of like. What are people going to think of me? Mm. Is it going to work? Am I going to have to quit my job? It's like one of the things that I, I mean, that was a piece of good advice from a mentor of mine is like one of the things for me in leaving freelancing and like turning my back on that because I had a bunch of clients. Over the last 12 months, the amount of clients that have like 
come to me and been like, hey, do you want to work on this project again that you've done every year for the last five years? And I've had to go, sorry, I don't do that anymore. Mm. You have to learn to say no to the opportunities that come your way at the expense of finding something better. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Everything has a price for sure. <laughs> yeah. Brother Tom, mate, thank you so much. I, like I knew we were kind of like very similar in many ways of thinking and stuff. But at the same time, like I see how in same with Guillaume, you know, like how different we are, but how everything is super connected as well. Oh, know? we have similar, we have very yeah. similar approaches to yeah. life. I think it just like, yeah, it's it's very funny. Like we're all very... Yeah, we all approach things from a very unique perspective. Yes, We're all a bit different yes. in the way we try things. Unique and, presentation to each one of them. Yeah. That's awesome, man. I think this good. is awesome. Like, I think what you're doing here is cool. Like, it's very, very cool. Like, trying to, like, I, I'm always a big proponent in, I, I think this is clearly something that you want to try and do. Clearly. Like, you wouldn't be doing it if you didn't want to. Yeah. So, it's like, keep trying. Yeah. Like, please, for the love of God, keep trying. Because it's, it's worth it. Like, imagine if... Imagine if this was making enough money that you never had to do any mm -hmm. freelance work again. Yeah. It'd like yeah. be pretty fucking awesome. So it's like keep trying to make it work. And I'd like it's it's awesome to see how much effort you're putting into this. This is by far like the highest production podcast I've done. So yeah. yeah. I'm I'm awesome. really stoked to know that. It's my that. studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's actually me who yeah. brought the production level up. Anyway. Yeah, no, thanks for assisting with that. No, honestly, dude, thank you for making the time to do yeah, this. Of course. This is the first time we're meeting in person, by the way. We have only chatted through social yeah. media. So yeah. um I'm really stoked that you made the time for this. Thank you for dropping all these nuggets of knowledge. Of course. Um I'm pretty sure a lot of people got a ton of value and yeah, man. Well, I will keep doing this. Yeah. To have some. We'll do see. This. We'll do, do this a round again. two. Yeah, yeah let's for do sure. this again in like a year. Yeah, we'll, yeah. See where yeah. We're at. We'll, we'll we'll do a round two. It will be fun to look back to to what's going on right now, to what's up. But yeah, fuck man, yeah. you you're incredible at what you're Thank doing. You, Thank you for taking risk. Thank <laughs> you for pursuing things that are difficult. Thank you for not being realistic. We need more people like that, like you Thank doing you, this stuff because it actually makes a massive difference thank you dude um if you enjoyed the podcast please of course if you don't follow in tom what are you doing you should <laughs> definitely go and do all use all his products and join time to build and everything that he's doing because it's awesome you're not gonna regret it um if you want to support the podcast at the creative grid the best you could do the, if you want to give the extra mile something that actually makes a difference so we can continue to build the podcast is to leave an apple podcast review Five stars, of course, nothing less than that. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, just subscribe on YouTube. Follow us at The Creative Grid on every platform. I'm at Nail for Life on every platform. And we'll see you on the next episode. Good vibes to everyone. You.